So in the first lesson of this unit, we looked at the classification system of all living things you can find on this earth. Now we're going to take a look at how all those living things are related to each other through a piece of evidence we call molecular evidence. So by the end of this unit, you should be able to explain how scientists use DNA and protein, these molecules, to explain the universality of all living things and how we use that to, to explain how we all have common ancestors which means we can use these molecules to indicate uh, which phylum we belong into and class and order and family and genus and species. So a long time ago when you first started this course you, we introduced you to a unit called biochemistry. Bio meaning life and chemistry meaning the molecules. So basically we're looking at the molecules of life such as DNA and proteins. Well, DNA is made of base sequences. If you remember our A's, our T's, our G's, and our C's. And the coolest thing about DNA is you can tell how closely related two individuals are based on how similar their DNA is or their biochemistry. So this is my family. The funny looking guy in the middle, that's my dad. You'll have to excuse him. He's not very photogenic. So he gave me my genes, that's me. And the guy on the left is my little brother David. So same thing, my dad gave him his genes, and my brother Jonathan, and my little sister Michelle. So the more closely related you are to someone, the more DNA and proteins, since DNA codes for proteins, that you share with them. So since we're all closely related to each other, we all share the same DNA. So this is a picture of my extended family. You can clearly tell that some of these individuals are not as related as the others. This guy over here on the left, his name's Andrew. He married into the family, so he doesn't share as much DNA as the others because he's not as closely related to us. This is my Uncle Mike. He married my auntie, the lady standing in front of him, and my Aunt Donna, the lady sitting next to me. She married my Uncle George. These three individuals still share DNA with the rest of us because they're humans. They still have the DNA that codes for their eyes, for their hair, for their skin, but they don't share as much DNA because they come from different gene pools. So this is my cousin Kimmy on her wedding day. Can you tell who shares more DNA with her? That's right. This guy right here is Jason. That's her brother. And the other guy standing over here, that's Steven. That's her other brother. It's because they're immediately related to each other by their common ancestor, their mom and dad, they share the most DNA with each other. Well, if you look a little further out, this is Jonathan, this is Jonathan's brother Nathaniel, and myself. The three of us are cousins, so we share DNA with Kimmy as well, but not as much as her siblings, her brother Jason and her brother Stephen. So while we've determined that the more closely you're related to someone, the more DNA you share, the opposite is also true. The more DNA you share with someone, the more closely you're related to them. So on the right, this is the human genome. It contains all the genes that are in a single human cell. They're color-coded by chromosome number 1, chromosome number 2, chromosome number 3, and etc all the way to the sex chromosomes, X and Y. So if we were to take all the genes that we can find on our chromosome number one here in dark green and locate them on a mouse's genome, then we can see that some of the genes are still on chromosome number one, but some of the genes from our chromosome number one are also located on a mouse's chromosome number four. So while some of the DNA is located on a different chromosome, it still shares some of the base sequences, the A's, T's, G's, and C's. So what does this all mean? Well, we already determined that the more DNA you share with someone, the more related you are. So let's compare the mouse to other relatives of humans. So here we have chromosome number one from humans. That's us in the middle. And the mouse over here on the right. The blue genes no pun intended, 
are located in the middle of our chromosome. So let's say this DNA sequence codes for lungs. Dogs have the same DNA sequence, so they have lungs, and so do mice. In fact, if we were to search all the DNA in every single one of these organisms, we would find that every single one has the gene for lungs, except for zebrafish. So that means zebrafish don't have lungs, and in fact, they have gills instead. Another cool thing that this diagram shows us is that by looking at the amount of DNA that the chimpanzee shares with us, we can determine that we are more closely related to chimpanzees than we are to the other organisms in this diagram. So by using the science of biochemistry and comparing the DNA and proteins, we've been able to shed some light on how closely related the giant panda is to pandas and bears. For hundreds of years, people have debated whether giant pandas are fuzzy raccoons, oversized pandas, or funny-looking bears. But by analyzing the molecular structure of their DNA and proteins, we've been able to determine that red pandas and raccoons actually share a common ancestor down here, whereas the giant pandas are more closely related to other bears at this common ancestor. So the giant panda actually belongs to the bear family more than the pandas or the raccoon family. So while looking at physical traits can oftentimes be deceiving, molecular evidence gives us more insight on who's more closely related to whom. In fact, scientists have used molecular evidence to show the relationships between many organisms, such as house cats, skunks, wolverines, dogs, and wolves. So comparative biochemistry allows us to see how animals, fungus, plants, protists, and even bacteria are related in some form or fashion. So all living life forms on this planet share a common ancestor starting from the middle and branching outwards into all these different families or phylogenies. We call this the universality of DNA and protein structures for the common ancestry of living organisms.